All right, on today's Vast Motorsports, I finally got the truck running. Had the little issue out of it, had to send the them off. The fuel injection control module, and I have it rebuilt. I got it back today. Just stuck it in, everything seems to be good. So now I've been eyeballing, uh, and this is a shocker for everybody, another boat. So here we go. We're gonna make a little trip on down North Fort Myers and check out this boat. Bring her on back with us. So stick around, enjoy the video. All right, well, me and Jasper and Lee, we went and looked at the boat the other day and that's when I did the little intro and I gotta admit, I got there and it was in a lot worse shape than I thought. And we didn't have the price quite where I wanted it. So I left, it's about an hour and a half from where we're staying in RV park. Couple days went by. He contacted me today, gave me a text, got the price down where I wanted it. So I said, hell yeah, I'll be on the way. Let's do it. And it's a 2001 Maxim 2300. Guess the SR model because it's a bow rider, open bow. Pretty nice aluminum trailer, and that's one of the sellers of it is I wanted this trailer because it's extra long it's actually a little too long for this boat and tomorrow we're going to run over to the east coast and look at the 268 monterey ss 27 foot bow rider so this trailer since it doesn't have one will work got the bravo 3 on here dual prop that is worth more than what I just paid for the entire boat. This one does have the bow thrusters. This is a special option on the Maxims. Not a lot of boats have those. Um, but unfortunately, the one on the other side is actually missing. Uh, the one in the front here, front bow thruster is in. It's in there, but I don't know what kind of shape. Probably not good. He did tell me they don't work, of course. No biggie, but uh, I'll climb up in it later and show you inside, like tomorrow or something, maybe the different day. But anyway, I just wanted to let you know, keep you updated. It does need full interior work. Everything is in there, but it's just sunburned and eaten up. But hey, I know a guy, Steve Stitches, and I can do all kind of custom work. Might even copy yours, Robbie. Woo! I know you won't like that, but I might have to do a little diamond tuck and copy the 2100. So anyway, let's get back to the RV tonight. It's raining, it's dark, it's like 8.30. I had to pull in the gas station here and pump up the tires because a couple were low. I'm not towing an hour and a half with any low tires. I don't want any blowouts. They don't look dry rod or anything like that. But let's get on the road. Let's go get something to eat. All right. So definitely do yourself a favor and stick around till the end of the video and let's see what we got planned, whether we're fixing her, partner, whatever we're gonna do. I do wanna try to at least get it running and hear the motor. I didn't check it yet, see if it was locked up or anything. He just said when you hit the key, it doesn't do anything. A lot of rust from the salt water. There could be, the starter could be shot. Could be a connection somewhere. We'll find out. All right, so I come out here. Just got back to the RV park. Went ahead and ate. And it is killing me. I'm not going to be able to sleep if I don't take this ratchet right here. I got a... 16 millimeter or 5 8 about to put it on the crank down there and see if i can get it to spin at all i want to know is this motor locked up or not and i am hoping and praying that it's not and then we'll be able to at least hear her run if it's locked then i have to use one of my other eh, yeah i knew it Oh, yeah, she's locked. I was afraid of that. Oh, well, I'll leave it like that for now. I kind of figured I knew when all this rust and stuff and the manifolds look like that, it's going to be rusted. 
So tomorrow we're going to look at the other boat, the Monterey. It does not have a powertrain at all. It needs the motor. It needs the transom plate. It needs the outdrive. But I've got all that back home in the shop anyway. Uh, nice 350 MPI and got a nice Bravo 3 set up and all besides this one. So we will mess with this motor. I wind up pulling the plugs out, filling the cylinders up with some WD-40, spray it in there. We'll let it sit overnight and then see if we can get it to break loose or not. I guess uh, when I get a chance, probably in, in a day or two whenever I get back from the other place with the other boat, but I'll go ahead and stick a hot battery in it. I want to hit the key and see what it's doing. Is the starter at least clunking or is it doing anything at all or what's going on? And uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I come out. Figured I'd mess with the boat today and uh, go ahead and pull the plugs, fill these cylinders up with some WD-40, see if she'll break free. So I pulled the first plug and, you know, you can tell it's got new wires and all and it was probably tuned up. He says six or eight months ago I went to the mechanic and got all kind of work done and blah, blah, blah and was running good. And the plug doesn't appear that it was ran that much. But when I took it out, water just gushed out. So, uh, man, it's probably not very good. I would say the motor's probably shot. And at the least, even if I do get it broke free, I would still want to take the heads off now because those valves on the seats are going to be very rusty. And so when you start it and run it, the pits on it are going to eat up the valve seats and it even if the cylinders look good, it's still going to have low compression. You know, it might run or whatever, but it's not going to run to its full potential, of course. So I got the second plug broke here. Let's see what happens when I pull this one. Now this cylinder may be up higher. There might not be as much water, or it could be rainwater got in. I'm really not sure if the manifold's actually... Oh, yeah. I hear it running out now. Yay! Just what I didn't want. But I bought the boat really dirt cheap. Because, like I told him, I said I could look at the motor. I knew it was going to need a motor. You don't get that kind of rust on the top. Even if the thing would run, I mean, there's so much on it eating up. You know, and it's going to have to be taken apart and all new gaskets and all because I wouldn't trust the intake gaskets or anything like that. You know, they're going to pop even if it did run and you're trying to use the boat. So, anyway, trying to decide now whether to fix the motor. I'm going to have to pull it, obviously. Or should I just try to get it running in here like I was talking about? I could spray the WD in all the cylinders. If I can put the ratchet on the front and get it to break loose, then there's no reason I can't start the motor at least and hear it run. Um, now I've got the boat all nasty looking, which, I, all right, it was already nasty, dirty. But I took like the top off because I didn't want to tow it with the top up like it was. He didn't have a boot or anything for it to had to take this panel off that goes back here, you know, to hide. Uh, it was harder to work on the motor, so I popped the panel out, stuck it up here, so you really can't get a good view of the boat. But, since I do custom interiors anyway, everything is here, and I can definitely redo it, make it look great. So, drop me some comments. Let's see what you think I should do before I finish up here. Should we just go ahead and, like I said, fill the cylinders with some WD, see if we can get her to break loose? Hell, once I get all these spark plugs out and the water releases, it might spin then. Let's try that. Stick around. Let's see what happens. All right. And the other thing I wanted to mention is I did pull the dipstick even when I went and looked at the boat, you know, just to see what the oil looked like. And it does not look like it's got water all mixed in it. Now, this boat is from uh, Fort Myers, North Fort Myers. It wasn't out on the beach. It didn't get hurt in a hurricane necessarily. Um, it was inland pretty good. But, hell, I'm in Little Charlie Creek RV Park. We're an hour and a half inland, and we got flooded. So, I mean, anything is possible. 
but I don't know that that was the problem. I, I trust the guy on that part. He seemed really honest with what he, he just wasn't a boat person. He didn't know that much about engines and stuff. Obviously he was paying a mechanic to do everything too. And so I'm not blaming him, you know, like he said, six or eight months ago when he had it worked on, it was good. And then it got uh, put away and just hadn't been used because they didn't have time. And I trust him. I believe him on that because he was like 70 years old and uh, they had a lot going on and they uh, actually adopt a lot of kids and he had a lot of kids there and they used to enjoy the boat. But the last six or eight months of their life, they just ain't had time. So I believe it sat. And like I told him, I said, hey, a lot can happen in six or eight months. So I'm going to say that it needs a motor. But anyway, uh, because he told me, you know, when you try to turn the key, the trim pump works and all, but the engine just wouldn't do anything. Now, I don't know if that meant there was a clunk on the starter or just no noise at all. I didn't even bother asking because I knew it was going to need a motor. So anyway, uh, or I had to buy it right saying, you know, I knew it was going to need a motor, which it probably does. So uh, anyway, plenty of people had came and looked and not bought it and turned around and left and all that good stuff. So I wound up with it for the right price. I feel okay because, like I said, I got the whole setup for less than just the outdrive's worth. It does have the Bravo 3 on it, and uh, they're 2500 used all day long. So if you can find them for that, and that would probably be without the props. So I did real good. I got it cheap, so I'm not worried about that. And... Uh, I guess let's go ahead and get the other plugs out and we'll see oh the other thing is when the water's coming out it does not feel like salt water so and that was the other point of i wanted to mention we're south florida pretty far down it is definitely not a freeze issue it is not frozen and cracked anything uh so either a manifold rusted out or the rain water you know, he didn't have it covered, and if it was getting down in here and going through the throttle body, then that could fill the cylinders also.